Many people assume the Arduino is some kind of single board computer, but it's actually based on a microcontroller. So let's understand the difference between a microcontroller and a general purpose computer. A computer has a microprocessor, or CPU, that is designed for a wide range of uses. This can be anything from playing a game, to word processing, to controlling a robot. A computer is a jack of all trades and a master of none. A computer also runs an operating system such as Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. A microcontroller is a system on a chip that is designed to be very good for very specialized purposes. They don't run an operating system, but instead run a custom firmware. Without the full operating system of a computer, they are very fast and very efficient, and require so little power that they can even operate on limited battery power. Microcontrollers are found in everything, from your microwave to your automobile. They're even the heart of multi-million dollar satellites orbiting the Earth. What Arduino did is fundamentally very simple, but incredibly powerful and launched a whole industry around microcontrollers. Microcontrollers were around long before Arduino, but they were very difficult to program and hard for beginners to learn. Arduino created an open source electronics platform for a specific set of microcontrollers. The Arduino boards contain a microcontroller at the center and all of the additional hardware to interface with it, including analog and digital I.O., voltage regulation, and even USB serial I.O. for uploading your code. There are many different types of Arduinos, including the Mega, the Uno, and this really tiny Nano. In addition to boards, Arduino also created an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, that makes it simple to create custom programs called sketches for the onboard microcontroller using the Arduino programming language, which is based on a simplified version of the C++ language. The IDE compiles these sketches into machine code that the microcontroller can understand. This opens up the platform to beginners by dramatically lowering the barrier of entry, while also making the platform even more robust for advanced users. The IDE is available on Windows, Mac OS, and even Linux. It makes the process of getting the code from your computer to the microcontroller as simple as plugging in a USB cable and clicking the upload button. This was a game changer when this was introduced. Arduino then built on this platform by introducing something called a shield. Arduino shields are circuit boards that are designed to sit on top of the Arduino and add additional functionality. There are networking shields for adding Ethernet and Wi-Fi, or robotic shields for adding stepper motors and servo controllers. There are even shields that allow you to create an MP3 player out of an Arduino board. And being that Arduino open sourced, any manufacturer that wants can make these boards. Now they can't call them an Arduino, but they can say they are Arduino compatible. You end up with products like the LavFin Uno, which is an exact clone of the official Arduino Uno. These clones are everywhere, and they are generally somewhat cheaper than the official boards. Now that we know what an Arduino is, let's take a tour of one. We'll first look at the Arduino Uno, as I believe it is the most common Arduino you'll find. At the heart of the Arduino Uno is a microcontroller. This particular Uno has a surface mount at Mega 328P, but many Unos will have a through-hole style microcontroller, like this one for example. Powering the Arduino can be done from the USB port, or from the DC barrel jack. In fact, the Arduino will automatically and seamlessly switch between the two. This is great for battery-operated projects. It allows you to swap the battery out without rebooting the Arduino. One word of caution here. Although the Arduino will operate from a 5-volt USB power source, the barrel jack should be between 7 to 12 volts, as there is a voltage regulator behind it that requires a minimum of 6.2 volts to output a stable 5 volts. Speaking of USB, there's actually two microcontrollers on the Arduino. The second, smaller microcontroller is running firmware designed specifically for connecting to your PC's USB port and uploading code. It's part of the magic of what Arduino created. After your firmware is uploading and running, this is the same chip that writes data to the serial console in your Arduino sketches. Over here are three LEDs that are very handy. TX and RX let you know when serial data is moving back and forth. It's a great troubleshooting indicator when things aren't working like you planned. The other one is attached to digital pen 13. I use this LED a lot when I want to light a status indicator for troubleshooting without the need to wire an LED on my breadboard. Just define pen 13 as an output and set it high or low. Next up is the reset switch. Every Arduino has one. Just like the reset button on your PC, it forces the Arduino to power cycle and restart execution from the beginning. Now let's shift over to the pens. The Arduino Uno is loaded with connectivity, and if you move up to Arduinos like the Mega 2560, you can get even more connections for even more devices. 
On the power rail, you have access to grounds, 3.3 volts, and 5 volts. In addition, there is a reset pin and a voltage in that can also be used to power your Arduino that is connected to the same voltage regulator as the barrel jack. Next up is the ICSP connector, or in-circuit serial programmer. This set of pins allows you to bypass all of the bootloaders and features of the IDE and program the Atmega microcontroller directly. This is handy for reprogramming a corrupted Arduino or for bulk programming on production assembly lines. Moving along, pins 0 and 1 are for sending and receiving serial data. These can be used to transfer serial data between an Arduino and another device. Some shields, like the Bluetooth shield, use these pins for their primary means of interfacing. Pins 2 through 13 are the digital I.O. pins. These pins can be used to control other devices via digital input and output. That means that plus 5 volts represents a 1 and 0 volts represents a 0 in binary form. Additionally, these can be switched to input pins in your software to allow the Arduino to detect the press of a button or receive input from another device that applies 5 volts to the pin. You'll also notice that some of these pins have a tilde next to them. This means that the pin is capable of handling hardware-based pulse width modulation, or PWM. With PWM, we can output continuous pulses of 5 volts called square waves. This feature allows us to control devices like servos and addressable LEDs. Next up are the analog pins A0 through A5. The analog pins operate exactly like the digital pins with one major benefit. When operating as input pins, they can read a voltage anywhere between 0 and 5 volts. The ADC has a 10-bit resolution and returns integers between 0 and 1023 perfect for detecting the position of analog joysticks. If you don't need analog inputs, you can use them just like any of the digital pens. One last thing to point out. Some of these pens support dual purposes. For example, A4 and A5 are also the two-wire serial pens for the I2C protocol, and pens 10 through 13 also double as the four wires for the Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI. More on those in a future video. In the meantime, check out our other videos on the Arduino. We have tutorials on just about everything.